Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Felice Aschenberger from the University for Continuing Education, Krems, Austria. It's a pleasure for me to be part of this symposium on migration and transition and to have this opportunity to present my work. So I would like to thank you, um, Andrea and um, Natasha, for this opportunity. Um, I'm very sorry that I cannot be there in person due to some unforeseen circumstances, um, but I'm grateful to our network conveners and to our chairman, Liz, for making it possible for me to share this recording with you today. I hope you find my presentation engaging and I look forward to joining the discussion online if it's possible. Thank you for understanding and let's move on to my presentation. So I would like to talk about today um, with the relationship of migration and education and, and how it affects the, the biographies of migrant women. Migration disrupts the accumulated biographical knowledge and experience of individuals, especially those who migrated at the later age, compelling them to adapt to new sociocultural frameworks, frameworks and values. This process of adaptation necessitates the restructuring of their life narratives, a complex transformation that has profound implications for their sense of identity and belonging. In this context, education emerges as a critical tool for both the restructuring of biographies and the integration of migrants into their new social environments. It plays a pivotal role in facilitating social inclusion, offering a pathway through which migrants can navigate the challenges of resettlement and reconstruct their identities uh, within the whole society. Morris, who conducts um, very uh, good research and, and really um, with the refugees and migrants um, uh, from UK, highlights the importance of conceptualizing learning as a dynamic response of life events, emphasizing that the process involves continuous deconstruction and reconstruction of the self. This ongoing reconstruction reflects the struggle migrants face in proving and gaining acceptance for their pre-existing cultural and social capitals in a new and often unfamiliar context. Education thus become um, a site uh, becomes a site of both opportunity and challenge where migrants engage in difficult task of negotiating their identities and at the same time striving for recognition in their new environments. The effects of education here is then um, multifaceted with both positive and negative outcomes. On the one hand, education can empower migrants, as we all know, providing them with the skills and knowledge necessary to thrive in their new surroundings. On the other hand, it can also expose them to exclusionary practices and reinforce the existing inequalities, particularly when their prior experiences and qualifications are not recognized and valued, as we've seen in previous studies um, from Morris and such as Morris and Gould. This duality underscores the complex role of education in the migration experience, highlighting the need for more inclusive and equitable educational practices that recognize and build up on the diverse backgrounds of migrant learners. Um, as I'm working with the migrant woman, gender is an important aspect of my research. So I thought it's to fully understand it's necessary uh, to work with the gender to, to fully understand the complexities of migration. Migration can both reinforce and challenge existing gender relations, requiring a nuanced exploration of how masculinities and femininities are constructed and negotiated in various aspects of migrant lives. This perspective is particularly important when considering the phenomenon of female migration, which can be analyzed across several dimensions. Firstly, the quantitative dimension emphasizes the significant number of women involved in migration, highlighting the need for focused study. Secondly, the visibility dimension underscores the growing recognition of gender as a critical lens in social and academic spheres reflecting an increased awareness of the unique experiences of migrant women. And lastly, the qualitative dimension delves into evolving profile of migrant women, particularly concerning their autonomy and emancipation. Understanding 
These dimensions also require an intersectional approach, as migrant women often encounter compounded barriers linked to gender, class, race, ethnicity, and also religion. These intersecting identities can exacerbate challenges in social inclusion and labor market integration, making it more difficult for female migrants to navigate their new environments compared to their male counterparts, as studies show. This intersectional framework not only highlights the specific challenges faced by migrant women, but also provides a more comprehensive understanding of how various forms of discrimination and disadvantage operate simultaneously, shaping their experiences in profound ways. So I would like to share you some graphics that shows um, some characteristics of migrant women. As you can see, migrant females are highly educated compared to um, migrant female, migrant males. But at the same time, they are um, with a higher rate of unemployment. So we can say that, especially in Europe, looking at the European data, um, we can say that they are highly skilled, um, but at the same time, they work at overqualified and underpaid jobs um, with the higher rates of unemployment. I also would like to just give a quick look at the uh, vocational education and training in Germany, because here is the context is Germany. Vocational education and training serves as a critical bridge for migrants, as we all know, equipping them with the necessary skills to participate effectively in the host country's economy. WET programs are particularly vital for facilitating the integration of migrants by providing them with practical job-specific training that can enhance their employability. However, the participation of female migrants in WET remains disproportionately low. This data from 2015 from Germany shows that um, almost 47% of the 10th grade students participate in the initial uh, WET training. And um, the newest data shows that 30, almost 34, 35% of the apprentices are female, but out of these 34%, only 3.9% are foreigner and that a migration background. Um, Yet, despite these challenges, the employment rate for recent wet graduates stands at an impressive um, 90.2, significantly higher than the EU averages. And this highlights the effectiveness of wet in securing employment for graduates, yet also points to gender and migrant disparity in participation that needs to be addressed. Um, the existing literature on migrant women, despite recent advancements through critical and feminist studies, reveals a significant underrepresentation of their experiences, particularly within the European context. When migrant women are represented, they are often subject to orientalist portrayals or stereotyped as passive figures who are obstacles to modernization, especially Ariel underlines this pretty much um, in her um, studies. Such depictions fail to capture the complexity of their lives and active roles they play in their own integration and development. Moreover, uh, the intersection of vocational education and training in migrant women remains largely um, unexplored in current research. This gap highlights the need for more nuanced studies that focus on how wet programs impact the lives of migrant women, particularly in terms of their integration, empowerment, and social mobility. Addressing this gap is crucial for providing a more accurate and inclusive representation of migrant women in education and specifically wet education research, um, thereby challenging existing stereotypes and contributing to a more comprehensive understanding of their experiences. So based on this um, background, my goal is to explore the learning biographies of migrant women in Germany who have different education and migration histories in order to understand their educational trajectories and investigate the role of the learning activities in their personal lives and their integration um, to uh, society. Um, I have two research questions that guided the study. Focusing on the first question is the, uh, about the perceptions of learning. 
and how these perception or the construction shape their experience as, as migrants. The second one concerns the integration and um, inclusion uh, based on individual and systemic characteristics. And the last one is the uh, learning how learning biographies are uh, configured and how they're corresponding to their life courses and looking at the interplay between learning experiences and life trajectories. Um, I used a life course approach, a biographical approach, which includes in-depth narrative biographical interviews with Turkish migrant women. Um, with this, I aim to capture the objective shape and formation of life courses, as well as their subjective biographical meaning um, in relation to learning um, following Wingens. I would like to give a very brief uh, kind of glimpse to biographical research in migration and education. Here, biographical research offers a powerful lens for exploring the intersection between individual experiences and broader societal structures, particularly in relation to gender, class, and ethnicity. As Merrill notes, personal biographies often reveal shared experiences that reflect these micro-level dynamics. This approach emphasizes the inter interaction between individual subjectivity and societal conditions, with learning playing a crucial role in this process following a PT al -Hait. It al underscores the value of biographical methods in challenging prevailing assumptions, prejudices, and perceptions about migrant women. By foregrounding agency and subjectivity, biographical research not only disrupts dominant narratives, but also empowers marginalized voices. It promotes reflexivity and offers nuanced insights into the complexities of migrant women's life, making it an essential tool for understanding their experiences. Um, in terms of my participants, as I told you, it's an ongoing study. And today I will share with you the four, um, the, the biographies or perceptions, experiences of four women um, and that I talked to in 2023 in Germany. Um, and I collected, uh, I talked to them, some of them face-to-face, -face, visited there in their homes. Um, and some of them I, I conducted online interviews. <clears throat> so these are my participants. Um, they are all middle-aged, with the exception of Fatma. She's 60. Um, most of them are like the first, uh, they came, their parents came uh, with the first um, movement of migration from Turkey to Germany around, as you can see, 70s, the beginning of 70s and late 60s. Um, most of them are born in Germany, with the exception of um, Fatma. She uh, came uh, when she was seven years old, so she started school um, in Germany. But the, all the other uh, participants, um, they were born, in, uh, born and raised in Germany. Um, as you can see, they are, I would call, highly skilled and first in academics. Um, they're all parents are... Uh, primary school and some of even uh, some of the women were um, moms uh, they reported that they even didn't finish primary school in Turkey they're all married um, exception of Selma they have kids um, and they are at the moment um, active in society and labor market exception of Selma she was unemployed um, at the moment that I talked to her and they um participated actually, as we will see, um, very interesting, full of very interesting tracks of um, education. So let's look at the um, key or initial findings. Uh, the first I organize is uh, the first part is participation to education. Um, here, um, the educational trajectories of the women in the study uh, reveal consistent engagement with the German educational system from an early age, as I told you, um, because they were born and raised there, and they are engaged with the German educational system very early. Um, all participants received their early and formal education in Germany, laying a foundational pathway for further educational pursuits. In terms of higher education, each woman attempted 
or pursued studies beyond secondary education, although the degrees of completion and success varied, reflecting a shared aspiration towards achieving higher education qualifications. Additionally, three of the women engaged in vocational education and training at some point in their educational biographies. Um, some of them had initial vocational education training, and then some had um, continuing education and vocational training uh, here with uh, WET uh, proving particularly significant for two of them as it facilitated their career pathways, especially for um, the audiologist. For example, she dropped out of the medicine um, instead of being a doctor, she, she chose to be an um, audiologist through vocational education and training. Um, beyond formal education, all the women continue to participate in adult learning activities, um, whether through formal education programs, language courses, or community-based education initiatives, demonstrating their commitment to lifelong learning and adaptation uh, within their societal uh, context. Concerning the perception of education, um, the women in this study uniformly perceive education as an invaluable and essential tool for both personal and professional development. This belief is strongly shared not only by the women themselves, but also by their parents, highlighting the generational importance placed on educational attainment. Fatima, for instance, recalls how her father consistently emphasized the significance of education, always encouraging them to pursue their studies. Education is weaved as a critical pathway to better opportunities and the means of integration into German society, serving as both an empower empowering and transformative force. Aisha, for example, mentioned that, um, which for me was one of the most significant uh, moments of my interviews. She underlined, for me, my education brought the freedom. And she repeated it like a few times. Um, so that's very, very important. However, um, the educational journeys of these women were not without challenges. Each woman encountered unique obstacles, including language barriers, even though they were born in Germany, um, cultural differences, and the need to balance family responsibilities later on, especially during the uh, university study time. These challenges were further exacerbated by their migrant status intersecting with issues of class and gender. Hatija, for example, reflected on her experience as the only Turk student in her class, um, where she often felt like the odd one out and struggled with not belonging to a group of students who came from academic families and not being able to participate in the activities uh, that were beyond her reach. These experiences underscore the complexities and barriers that migrant women face in their pursuit of education throughout their um, educational life. And being a migrant woman in relation to their um, learning and, and cultural and so societal integration, these four women in the study, in my study, navigated the challenging process of integrating into German society um, while striving to maintain their cultural and religious identities. They engaged actively in community organizations that upheld and supported their cultural heritage which provided a sense of belonging among the broader societal pressures. Despite being born and raised in Germany, Selma, for example, expressed a persisting sense of not fully belonging to the community, connecting this to her headscarf, which made her feel more susceptible to exclusion and being targeted as it's an obvious sign for her religion. Um, yeah, two of the women, um, Selma and Aisha, um, they were um, headscarf. The intersection of gender and migrant status uh, introduced further complexities in their lives. These women faced additional challenges, such as dealing with stereotypes, feeling of otherness, and experiences of exclusion and discrimination. These difficulties were evident in various settings, such as schools, uh, the public services, career guidance um, and during the, um, uh, the career guiding sessions at the high school, or an employment agency and the workplace. Hatija, for instance, stated how the unemployment agency immediately directed her towards nursing and cleaning jobs, reflecting the limited and stereotypical expectations placed on her as a migrant woman. 
Moreover, balancing um, traditional gender roles and with their personal aspirations proved difficult, with many of the women altering their educational paths due to family responsibilities. Fatma, for example, had to pause both her work and education to take care of her children, illustrating the ongoing struggle to balance familial duties with prof professional and personal um, ambitions. So in conclusion, um, on the education and migration nexus, what can I say? So the um, findings of my study underline the complexity of socially embedded educational experiences of migrant women. Um, for example, living in limbo um, was mentioned by all of them, um, not being belonging to Germany, not being belonging to Turkish culture completely. So, and, and feeling like, especially when they were children, feeling like going back to Turkey was always um, uh, put forward uh, by their families. Oh, we are here for temporary. So we will go back to Turkey at some time, but they never went back. But also other uh, economical, cultural, social, and cultural, uh, uh, cultural and social capitals. Education, of course, emerges here as a powerful tool for empowerment, offering these women the possibility of transformation and a sense of freedom. Participation to education also facilitates the recognition of their own agency, boosting their self confidence and self-efficacy as they navigate the multiple realities of intersectionality, including class, religion, gender, um, and education level. However, the question of whether education truly leads to inclusion in my study, at least up with my initial um, results, remains still open. Um, while education has the potential to bridge gaps and foster integration, the persistent challenges faced by migrant women indicate that achieving true inclusivity through education is still an ongoing struggle. So thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I hope I didn't bore you much. And if I can um, join the discussion online, I will be very happy to answer your questions. If not, please write me. Um, you see my email here and I would be happy to be in contact. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference.